Today is finally the day where I will be showing off my rune light settings. This has been a much requested video for God knows how long, to, over two years at this point. Now it does kind of creep up here and there when people in my stream come in like, how do you do this? Like, wh how does your game look so good? Like, what's this? And you know, there's always been a few commands in my stream that have kind of given a little bit of help with setting up their client in a nice way, but this will be the video where I just go through my top settings on RuneLight and I'll be discussing why I use them. And I won't be going through every single thing, obviously, but like the top ones I've kind of favorited. So I think um, the majority of the stuff that I cover will be pretty applicable. Now, if I do miss anything, which is uh, pretty much 100% inevitable, just leave it down in the comments. Say, hey, how do you do this? Or, hey, you missed this. Explain. I will pin some of the comments that are really relevant. So down in the comments, guys, just fucking leave whatever I've left out. But before we get into it, you guys already know what I'm about to say. Drop a like if you like the video. And big shout out to the channel members. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And click that little bell icon. All right. So first things first. I am showing off my 1080p monitor. This is a 24-inch 1080p monitor. Yes, it looks um, big, as you guys can see like from down here. So the first thing I do is I use XBR, and XBR is going to be on GPU, and what I do is I have my draw distance all the way up. Um, that's my own personal preference. If you have a shitty computer, you know you don't need that. Um, Anti-aliasing I always have up because I just do have a nice computer if I can run it. Now if I'm using like 117 HD, I can't really have super high settings, but with the traditional... Normal GPU, I can do it. Now, this is the big thing. UI scaling, XBR, that stands for scaled by rules. It's a algorithm that basically detects other surrounding pixels and it creates a really smooth texture, which is really beautiful, actually. They've used it in uh, really old video games for like sprite textures and stuff. When things get really, really pixely, you can actually just use XBR and it makes it really smooth looking. It's crazy, it's really cool. So turn that on now, it's not gonna do anything yet if you're on the traditional fixed client. Now I will say, all of these settings I'm about to say regarding XBR do require you to have the fixed client. So um, on set, or uh, here it is, on display settings, make sure your game client layout is on classic layout, fixed. Okay. Then we're going to go down. So again, a lot of these things just don't really matter that much. So you can just kind of do whatever you want with it. The big thing is XBR. You just have that on and have GPU on, obviously. Now, the next thing you want to do is go down to stretched mode. Stretched mode is pretty nice. I turn on increased performance mode, integer scaling, and aspect ratio. It's all on. Resizable, I just keep at 0% and I just have it on. So this enables the fixed client to go into big mode. So if you see, if I kind of like shrink this client down a little bit, you see how it goes to normal. This is what a normal fixed client looks like. Now I'm gonna go to the setting called Rune Light. See how I've kind of like fucked everything up. Go to the setting called Rune Light and set your game size to 1530 by 1006. Yes, 1530, 1006. So here's a few settings you can kind of adjust. Uh, one of them is like you can keep your game size, you can have it contain in screen, whatever. It doesn't really matter. The big thing is the game size. The reason 1530 by 1006 is the exact resolution you need is because it multiplies the game's pixels by four, exactly. So that's what you want. So um, if you were to change this at any bit, it's like, oh, I don't like the screen this big. If you shrink it any lower, it's just not going to work. Uh, the XBR is going to look horrible. And stretched mode obviously can't really be turned on in that uh, way. So now here's a little pro tip life hack I'm going to show you guys. So I drag my client manually every time I log in. And if you look over on this side, so I'm going to just kind of bring the client over here. If you look. I am going to line my client up right so that this bar, when I move my mouse all the way over here, you see this where it says walk here? It goes away if I move my mouse too far. I don't like that. I like it so the client is right up pressed to the screen where even if I've hit the very side of the monitor, it still can click, which is really amazing. So if you guys have ever done like, I don't know, four to, the, uh, four to zero chambers and like final phase and stuff where you have to like do an eight way switch and hurry up and you know spray your mouse all the way over to the very left side of the screen. It's really nice when you can't really misclick because your guys just, you will 
hit this little border right here. And it's really, really, really nice. So I would highly recommend that if you guys are gonna be using this setting. Now, of course, you can't have a monitor on your left side. This is my furthest left monitor. So if I put my mouse over here, obviously it goes to the next one. So anyway, just a little pro tip, I guess. Uh, now, now what we're gonna kind of go in order a little bit of some of the things I like to use. Bank tag layouts is this. Bank tag layouts are just incredible. They are a little bit buggy, I do gotta say. So one of the, uh, the part that's really buggy is when there's clue scrolls or when there's things like that hold a layout of things that really shouldn't hold a layout. Like clue scrolls traditionally never hold a layout. So like if I were to put it in here, and I take out a clue scroll, it's not going to leave the little bank filler. So for some reason, that affects bank tag layouts kind of annoyingly. So for example, if I'm trying to click really fast, notice how none of those three items just fucking registered. It's because you have to wait an entire tick for stuff to uh, start registering after this clue scroll. Anyway, that's really besides the point. Um, the big thing is bank tag layouts are amazing. Um, basically what you can do is you can say, like, if you have an inventory set up, if you're like, oh, I'm going to go do whatever, Smithy, you just set up your whole, like, inventory and you can wear stuff. And then what you do is when your inventory and your, uh, worn gear is set up, you just said tag inventory, tag equipment. And then up here you, uh, will click new tag import and you'll type exactly what you did for the tag inventory. And then it comes up up here. You can change the icon. You can make them look like whatever you want. Anyway, this is a lot of like really common knowledge, but if you guys don't know, bank tag layouts is huge. I would highly recommend it. Okay. Boosts information. Now we're going to go in here real quick. I, you know what I really should do? I should go to the rune light setting first and really cover the rest of this. So the reason rune light setting is really important is because it really changes all your boosts, um, the way info boxes look, obviously XBR, game size, everything. So we'll, we're just going to go back in here and I'm, I'm going to share a few things. So first off, okay, so notification settings, not really important uh, in this video. You can set it to whatever you want, but overlay settings is the really important thing. So I've set all my fonts to small. Info box can't, wait. Huh? This can be small now? Okay, I thought it could only be regular. It could only be regular for a while. <laughs> I'm going to change it to small. We'll see what what, what that does. Um, I'm going to pull out a clue scroll real quick and see. Oops, didn't mean to drop it. So you notice how there's no border around my thing. A lot of people love that. And the way you do it is by going to overlay color right here. Yes. Turn everything down to zero. As soon as I crank this up, there's a fucking border around it, and it looks awful. So the opacity is the biggest thing. Just turn the opacity to zero, and it gets rid of it entirely. Now, this is a huge clue step. Obviously, it's a triple, so this just looks really obnoxious. But generally, when I get a step, it's just in this little corner right here, which I really like. So I prefer that. Um, so that's the real big thing. My info box size is 20. So if I increase this, you'll see these increase which I do not like. I like it right at 20. And if you hold the Alt key, this makes it so you can click and drag. Now, I'm not going to drag right here because I have it set perfectly, and I really like that. Oh, by the way, my entity hider's on. <laughs> I got to turn that off. Um, so you can hold Alt, and you can also hold Alt and drag the corners and, like, shrink things. So some of the time, if you want to, like, lay out your boosts this way, in fact, I'll just, like, drink a Super Combat right now just so it can show a few more boosts. Um, these occasionally what happens is this doesn't keep continually going down. It actually shifts to the next row. And what you have to do is you have to hold shift, right click, and then click flip or detach. I can't really <laughs> remember which one it is, but you'll fucking get the idea. Just mess around with that. Hold shift, detach or flip, hold alt, drag this side all the way down as far as you possibly can. And that should fix it in a nice little layout right here. I personally like this. I don't like it when boosts are in my actual game window. I think it looks a little obnoxious. Um, in fact, I really wish almost everything could just be outside of this game window. The problem is, is uh, those info boxes with clue steps and stuff really can't be dragged out. And there's really no good spot for them to be dragged out uh, outside of the game window. So anyway, Moving on, let's go to boosts information. So, boosts information, I have info boxes on. That's uh, what I prefer. That's really the only big thing in boosts information. Bossing info is, com is something not really, uh, I don't know, display 
it's basically just a nice plugin I figured I would share. Bossing info allows you to kill bosses, and down here in an info box, it'll say how many kills per hour you're getting, and it'll say like what's your fastest kill, what's your average uh, kill. It's really cool. So I prefer having this on most of the time. It's kind of glitchy though, because when you stop killing a boss, it remains there, which is honestly a little bit annoying. So all you have to do is just click it on and off and then it fixes. So this is a plugin hub thing. Um, a lot of the, uh, I can't really remember which ones are in the plugin hub, but if you don't see them in the normal rune light settings, you can just search on plugin hub and you'll find them. Chat filter. Okay, here's another big one that I really enjoy. So a lot of people, here, if I do this, um, what can I do that gives a little notification setting? Um, I don't really know <laughs> right on the top of my head, but when you're killing bosses and when you're doing other things, and if you're, let's say, oh, here, here's a good one, actually. We'll just do the coal bag. So when I hold, okay, well, first of all, this just has a fill option. The bag now contains 36 pieces of coal. I empty it, it goes to empty. Now, when I fill it again, You'll notice how the message actually lowered because it was a complete replication of the previous mess. Not the previous message, but the message that was exactly repeated. So the coal bag contains 36 pieces of coal. It, it removes the other message that was above and it places it down below with now a parenthesis saying how many times it's been repeated this session. So as soon as you like log out and stuff, it clears it. Well, I actually don't know if it's when it when you're logged out. It might be when you close the client, it clears it. So when I empty this now, you'll notice that the coal bag is empty, now has a two, and it's also lowered to the very bottom. And when I keep doing this, obviously they just keep changing, it, which is really nice because it, it keeps your chat very free and kind of clear. Um, and it always is showing you what, I don't know, like it just brings everything down to a really nice, I don't know how to explain this, but you guys get the idea. I fucking love this, so I like it on. Uh, I would highly recommend you guys turn it on. So when you go to chat filters, just turn on collapse game chat. That's the thing you want. Now, custom menu swaps. Now, I'm just going to share this briefly. This is something really nice. Custom hides. So if you've ever ran around this game and you're like clicking and you keep accidentally red clicking trees, you no longer do that. I don't fucking chop trees down <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Nor have I in many years. So what I like to do is turn on custom hides. What you have to do is turn on the action, which is chop down first and then put a comma, no space, and then type tree, which is what this item is called. Same thing with oak. You don't type oak tree. You look at what it's actually called oak. So you say chop down comma oak, and now you can no longer click those. So if you ever have any plans to click any of these things, you might want to just not have these on. But if you plan on running around the game a lot and you're just sick and tired of accidentally red clicking trees, just do this. The other thing that's really nice is like exit stairs. So with uh, Sepulchre, one, one thing that was really annoying is entering a certain floor. My guy would accidentally red click the uh, quick exit or things like that. And so I just wanted to get rid of that entirely. Um, the other thing are just pretty much any sort of, I don't know, um, place that you're at where you're just really never going to use a certain option. For example, the magical obelisk, or sorry, that's not the one, um, examine trap door. Like you're never going to examine a trap door. There, there's like just so many things you can add to this. Now, of course, this is really tedious and obnoxious. So I've only done a few that like the really key ones. But, um, one thing that is annoying that I wish you could do is I wish you could turn off some staircases. One of the most annoying things about the crafting guild is that when you teleport here and you try to click this bank chest, your dude will accidentally sometimes click this fucking staircase because it's right here. It's really annoying. But if I go to custom hides and type staircase or I type uh, climb up or yeah, climb up comma staircase, it's going to do it for every single staircase. Now, there's certain ladders. God damn it, Polly's here. Worst timing. Um, there are certain times where like Specific ladders can work where it's not going to do it to every ladder, but for some reason when I shift click this staircase in particular, it doesn't actually offer the option, which uh, rune light, you should really add that, please. That would be really nice. He probably thinks I'm like, my bot's glitching out or something. I swear I'm not botting. 
Okay, I'm just not going to type to him. He's going to he, he's inevitably going to start saying something. I'll just ignore him. Anyway, I, you know what? Let's just hop worlds. I'm sick of this. I'm already sick of just what he's about to say. <laughs> All right. Anyway, moving on. Custom menu swaps. Let's see what's next. Customizable XP drops. Here's a big one. A lot of people have asked about this, and I've shared it. It's in my uh, Twitch commands. Now, watch how slowly this goes up. That is not the traditional uh, XP setting. So it has nothing to do with this orb. What it is is customizable XP drops. These are my settings. So you guys will probably have to pause the video and just see how I'm doing it. Now, I have my vertical XP uh, speed at 21. Now, another thing you can do is you actually hold Alt and you can actually change where the XP drops are flowing. There are so many options. So the this is something I would highly recommend is people just... I don't know, just do whatever you feel is right, what makes your game feel good, because there is a lot of options. Um, I really wish they would make the little skill icons less pixely. So, for example, if I make this, it's like this little fletching icon is extremely fucking pixely, which I wish they would like clear that up and make it look nicer. So, again, the big things are just like slowing down the speed um, time until disappear, that's pretty important. You want it to like really go up. The, the 296 is nice because it clears like right when it hits this line. Um, here's a really cool color. So if I'm praying piety and I attack, it'll be a red splat. If I pray augury, it'll be a blue splat or a blue uh, XP drop. And green will be uh, if I'm praying rigor. So I really like these, having these on. And then the tr just the normal XP drops are white. Uh, let me think. I don't think there was anything else really in here that's important. Um, I'm just, again, you can pause the video and see what my settings are if you guys have liked in my previous videos how my XP drops flow. I really love it. And one, one of the things that's actually kind of cool about it, which I think some people would be annoyed by, is even if I have a menu open, the XP still shows right here, which is, eh, I don't know how I feel about it, but I kind of like it. Because if you're doing a bank standing skill, it's, it's kind of cool to continually see your XP drops flow. Okay, that's it for that. Let's move on. Entity Hider. Now, I was hiding a lot of things right now, but one of the big things is hide dead NPCs. So this was a setting that finally became allowed in-game to be able to hide things that have died. So if you kill something, the that very tick when it's dead, the NPC will be uh, removed from sight. So I like this having it on. It is a little weird if you're used to having it on. So it's not for everybody. The biggest thing is just getting rid of the click box of it. But high, de high dead NPCs is really nice for like Baba Room and Nilos and stuff. Because it just really instantly clears up the room. Which I think most PVMers really enjoy this feature. So I would suggest having it on. GPU, we've already covered. Ground items, this is... Uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so the way you... G I haven't manually went into this list and started typing. What you do is, if you ever see an item, and a lot of you already know this, but I'll just share it anyway. If you drop an item, and you and you see that this is a pretty common item that you never want to see anymore, hold Alt and click the minus sign. You will no longer see that. And if you click the plus sign, I have set it so that it has a red beam which I enjoy for some certain things, which as you can see right here are the highlighted items. I like my clue scrolls being uh, obviously highlighted with the little beam and some other things as you guys see here. And then if you want to just get rid of it, just click the plus again. I'm going to click it on minus. It's the same thing over here. Uh, whenever I just see random items around the game, I hate seeing text everywhere. So I just clear everything that's just a spawn that's, you know, Anyway, that's what I like. So, ground items. Again, this list automatically starts filling out when you click the little minus sign. Um, again, a, a lot of this is just your own preferences. You can set these values to whatever you want. I've set my pink to 15 million. Let's move on to ground markers. So, ground markers are the things where you hold shift and you mark a tile. Now, I've set mine to 0.6 border width. I really wish Jagex, or not Jagex, but like Runelight would make this so it's not as pixely. Now, it doesn't look pixely if you're using a normal fixed client because it's already pixely as fuck. But when you're using XBR, it, it is a little bit annoying when these things are so jaggedy and stuff. Like, I wish it would just... 
I wish this could be almost implemented with GPU so that the ground markers don't look as fucking pixely. That's my own little annoyance that I don't like about this. But other than that, it's still nice. Fill opacity, I have at 30. Tile color, I've cranked up the opacity, but I've turned it all black. Um, so again, I kind of change these things up here and there. I think I really do like the default black though. Just keeps things clean. So that's what I like it as improved tile indicators. Now this is actually a really amazing feature. So I would say this is one of the coolest features in the game. As you guys see my, le this, this, uh, box around me, this little ground marker doesn't actually go above my legs and that's because this is on so when I turn it off you'll see it goes ahead of my legs again which just looks a little tacky so I personally like this on this is a plugin hub update uh, or a plugin hub plugin <laughs> and the, what's really cool is you can actually set certain NPCs to have the same feature so that the um, ground marker or the tile indicator that's being selected at will actually not be how am I I'm struggling to fucking explain this basically it'll go behind the monster so I have it on monsters that I kill a lot of and I just think it looks really clean you could switch it up here and there whatever you're killing I think it looks nice what you can do to an NPC is you shift click it and you click tag all so that they're tagged so I'm just going to tag this one cow now you see the lines above it I'm going to make it so it's draw above and now it's behind it which just looks nice you know what I mean so that's what I personally like. Let's remove that, untag. There we go. Uh, and yeah, so improved tile indicators, really nice. My destination tile is full opacity on white, and the custom destination uh, tile is off. I have it unselected because I just I don't like it. And destination tile border is two. So again, you guys can just look through those. Pause the video if you need. Logout timer, this is obviously really nice. I keep it at 25 minutes. I think it's just really convenient to like, I don't know, if you need to take a shit, go take a shit and your guys still log back in by the time you get back. So that's nice. I'd highly recommend that on. Menu entry swapper. So this isn't really too important. I'm not going to go through all these. You guys decide what's important to you. But the big thing is UI swaps. So... I'm going to just share the UI swamps real quick, uh, what I like to have on. So I like to sell stuff at shops. I like it at sell, fi sell five. I like the buy at buy 50 always. Uh, eat, wield, etc. is on when I'm doing certain activities like blast furnace or room crafting. I like it so I can just hold shift. So like right now, if I go to my... Um, coal bag and I hold shift, you'll see up in the corner it says empty now when I'm holding shift, which is really nice. So I empty it and now it's on fill. That's really nice, but usually I'll just have it on deposit all. So that's where you can find this. Again, a lot of you guys already know these things, but I feel like some people watching don't know this stuff. So just bear with me. Okay, music. This is a huge one because one of the most annoying things about this game is prayer noises. Yes. You know what I mean? Like the fucking, si it sounds like sirens when you're doing this. Now, I've turned mine off. In fact, I'll just turn this on real quick. See how fucking annoying that is? Turn it off. Get used to having it off. It's really, really annoying, especially if you're a streamer. I'm sorry, but this is like my own pet peeve. When a streamer has their prayer sounds on full blast, and they're one of those guys that one tick flick, I can't be in the stream anymore. I just can't. It's annoying. It's really annoying, so turn it off. Mute prayer sounds. Get used to this noise. You hear that? You can still hear the little tick timing. Um, and you'll get a lot more skilled at the game by just trying to get rid of the really annoying sounds and just really focusing on a tiny sound that's, I don't know. Maybe I'm just kind of projecting at this point. But just turn it off. It's annoying. So I like it off. <laughs> and you guys can do whatever the fuck you want. So let's go to NPC indicators now. So NPC indicators, of course. Uh, just highlighting a bajillion different NPCs. And here's my personal settings. Border width, of course, 0 0.6. Outline feather, I enjoy. Um, the fill color. So again, you guys can just pause and you can see my settings. Um, most of the time, the opacity is really low. Um, and here's these. So, again, just 
take a picture. Uh, the, these aren't the most important things. The real things were just XBR at the beginning. Um, now let's go to object markers. So here's my settings, 0.6. Again, I really like the 0.6 border width. I just have always enjoyed that. I think it's like the perfect width, at least for XBR. Um, let's see, path marker. Now this is the one where, if you guys look at my mini map over here, it's really cool. So here, actually, let me go out of this door so you can actually see how cool it really looks. In fact, I'm going to zoom this out a little bit too. So if you see the little, it's, it's really faint. But when I'm moving my mouse, it's going to show me the true tiles I'm going to be on. And when I'm just clicking around the game, you'll see these little highlights. This is showing me exactly the tiles I'll actually physically be on, which is amazing. Also, if you notice, look at the mini map up here while my mouse is here it still shows where I'm going to go. It's incredible. It's a really fantastic update. Big shout out to GE Challenge for this. So I'm going to show you my settings. I always have it on. I have draw locations as both, full path, and the main tile color I have on opacity 30 as white. And then secondary, I have opacity at zero. And that is so that I'm only seeing the true tiles I'm standing on. I don't want to see every single tile I'm passing over. It's pointless. Display always, mini map, yes, full path, and then of course 35 opacity and zero opacity here. So I really, really enjoy this. Uh, I would highly recommend this if you guys are into pathing, if you're doing sepulchre, if you're doing any high level PVM, it's just really nice to have. So, and it's not too distracting either, in my opinion. Okay, again, we already covered rune light, stretch mode, we already covered tile indicators. So here's my tile indicators. Now, this kind of goes in conjunction with improved tile indicators. So my tile that I'm on, I've changed to yellow. I just really like knowing the exact tile I'm on. Because sometimes if you're using path marker, it's sort of hard to tell what tile you're actually on if you're kind of like just running around. It's cool to have a designated color for your true tile. So that's the big important thing here. Again, 0.8. Um, I don't know why this is Point eight. It's supposed to be point 0.6. I think point 0.8 just looked a little bit nicer on the settings for some reason. So I'm just going to keep it. But again, you can change it to whatever you want. Fill color. Again, opacity is a little bit lower. I always have the opacity down most of the time. I just think it looks way too aggressive when they're already when they're pumped up all the way. Now let's go to time tracking reminders. These are this is a really nice plugin that I have. Uh, I've actually had off for a few months, mainly because I didn't want to be distracted from birdhouses and herb runs and stuff, and feeling obligated to go do them. But I've turned it back on now. I think I'm going to start getting into them. Really cool. Um, you can turn on whatever you want. I really just like herbs and birdhouses. I think that's those are the most important. And as soon as you do a bird run it'll just clear it. And then as soon as your birdhouses are ready, it'll just pop up again, which is really nice. And it's not needy. You know what I mean? It's just here for when you want it. You can just turn it off if you're not interested in doing it for the day. I think it's great. Timers. Jesus Christ. Okay. Every single one's on. I guess that wasn't a really important one. And zoom extender I have on. Now, of course, there's other ones. I'm just going to briefly just like go through here just so you can pause the video and see what I do have on. I'm not going to go through all these because a lot of these are just like for specific pieces of content. But again, you can just pause the video and see what I have on and off in case you guys are wondering. And that's pretty much it for the video. Again, down in the comments, just let me know if there's a question you have or something I missed or you want to know another thing about my game. I really enjoy XBR. My DPI, I forgot to mention, my DPI is 800. Now, that is the equivalent of having 400 DPI on a normal-sized fixed client. I really enjoy the 800. I really enjoy the big screen. My eyes are getting worse as I'm getting older, so a big you know, 80% fill of the screen is just really nice for me. So anyway, that's it for me. I'm going to shut up now, <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like it if you did, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.